your schedule. How hard was it to put this thing together? Well, it, it was tough, to be honest. That, that first couple of weeks when they finally announced the starting date and then, you know, you, you dealing with the MTE and um, just talking to all the schools and making sure they were uh, in sync with the testing policy. And, and, it, and I'll, I'll be, you know, truthful with you right now. We're still, you know, even though we released the schedule, I, I would expect at least one change, if not more. I mean, it's just kind of every day something happens. Teams in uh, different leagues still haven't made decisions when they're starting. They're adding games in December. They're having to change things. So, you know, it, it, it's it's a constant ongoing process. To, you know, pretty much every day I talk to Drew Spiro in the morning, uh, usually talk to Casey Scott about something, and then talk to Drew at night again to kind of review what happened because, um, you know, it just seems like every day something comes up, but it's, uh, you know, we were pretty fortunate. I know a lot of guys that, that are not even close to getting their schedule done. And, and uh, a lot of it, because some of the, our credit to our league, uh, I think because we had football, we had been through some of this. Uh, we, we did a great job as a, uh, Jeff Jackson with our league got on the phone with all the coaches. We constantly, we stayed in constant contact and we tried to help each other. And so I think that in the long run, that, that helped us be a step ahead of a lot of other leagues. A lot of talk about non-conference bubbles. I'm not sure if anyone actually pulled it off with a destination where a group of teams go and play a group of games, but was that ever considered by you? Yeah, it was, it was, you know, I, I know that early conversations, um, with uh, our coaches in the league and, and Jeff Jackson, you know, that was something I, you know, I think money is a factor. Um, a lot of the bubbles that were created, we're asking for a lot of money and, and we're all in a financial uh, tough situation right now. So uh, some of these guys outpriced price themselves. I think the Mohican sun, uh, the casino that is up in Connecticut, I, I believe, or, Somewhere up in the east, they, they've actually created a, some kind of bubble where they have as many as 30 teams um, coming into that area. A lot of that is uh, a lot of those states are still somewhat locked down uh, under quarantine. Um, and, and this has allowed their, those teams to get some games early. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I think there's a schedule. I think the, the thing that one thing we can promise, expect the unexpected. And, uh, you know, if you're playing right now for, if you think about it, if you look at the state restrictions, North Dakota, uh, right. If you are coming from North Dakota to Kansas, you have to quarantine for 14 days. So if we had any of the North Dakota schools on our schedule early, they would not be able to come and play. So, and that with the outbreak, the spike in a lot of States, uh, that might be a factor, um, you know, for other states and, and, and including us, we could become a, uh, an issue with, you know, other states uh, where, where we're trying to travel to them if our numbers continue to spike. So there's a lot of factors involved there. Uh, every day we think of something new. And again, I, 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 our coaches, we have a, a text thread that we stay in contact. Uh, Jeff Jackson's done a great job and we're all trying to help each other. I have the good fortune, Matt Painter, Council Martin, two of my former guys are on the NABC board and Matt's on the basketball oversight. So they're constantly, you know, we're talking, you know, just hashing out questions when they, they want to know what's going on, on on in our league and things like that to help each other to have the, the right answers. Because um, we want to have a season. We all do. We're going to have to work it out. And I'm not sure how many games we'll have, but um, – uh, hopefully enough to uh, to have a, what we would call a real season. I was curious about one thing. You've got South Dakota State coming in for that tournament, um, and I love that tournament. That's a, just a great idea. But you don't play them. Was there an, a thought of maybe having them stick around and playing a few days after the event or maybe have everyone play everyone at that event? Yeah, we had talked about that. In our case, we had – we had to – we would have had too many games because they, what the rule is it's 25 and two or 24 and three. And we already had contracted um, that many games. And to be honest, that might still happen because (laughs) 
if something else, you know, they brought it up to us. They actually wanted to play three games. And so that, you know, if, it, it's a possibility that that may happen. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. yeah, Coach, uh, just a little more on that, uh, the Little Apple Classic and everything. You already kind of talked about the struggles of scheduling and, and how it's been so difficult. But I was just wondering if you could go a little more into detail about the process of arranging that tournament with all of this, just kind of trying to, um, you know, bring a group, a small group even together just to get some games in. Yeah, it, you know, at first um, we were obviously supposed to go to Cayman Islands. Uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, they were the ones who uh, first said we were not allowing Americans to come. They, they did not, you know, so that, you know, that location got changed to Destin. Uh, and then the Destin dates uh, got, because of the NCA not allowing us to play until the 25th, we were supposed to have the dates uh, before that. That put that that tournament, you know, pretty much in, in a bind. They asked us for a possible other dates. Nothing really matched up with the teams that were in the tournament. The other thing that is really happening with a lot of these people that have run the tournaments, and, and again, they're, that's their businesses, that's their livelihoods, and they've had trouble with the testing policies. And, you know, certain leagues are testing every day. It's very, very expensive. We're, our league is three times a week. Uh, so everyone has to meet that testing protocol and then how you arrange that testing on site. So I, I think it's, it's really caused some problems. I, I heard yesterday that even ESPN is probably going to cancel a lot of their MTEs. So once that all happened, um, you know, I, we just started calling schools that were around here because we thought the best chance would be to play teams that could bust. Um, you know, to uh, either us or go, we could bus. Originally, I, I, I called Tad from uh, Boyle from Colorado. I, I just said, you know, would you want to do this? And he said, definitely. We were looking to go to their place. Um, some things didn't work out. We ended up getting teams to our place. Uh, they jumped on board. So, uh, you know, they, it, so it worked out. It, it, was, it was a good thing. Um, and again, I, I still hope it happens. Um, every day is a new adventure. Every day is a new challenge. Just trying to get practice, you know, get the practice and get our guys back to, you know, healthy and safe. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic we have to work with. It is a, it's, it's stressful. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And, um, uh, I've had a couple of sleepless nights trying to figure out, uh, you know, worried about things and trying to figure things out. Uh, it's it's made it tough. What what does practice look like with all of that? You you mentioned just kind of how it's stressful and kind of tough to navigate. But uh, could you just give us a little picture of what you know practice has looked like to this point? Well, I, you know, one Dr. Kyle Goral, um, our our local physician, is actually in charge of the whole Big Twelve uh, as far as the medical task for task force that's. Uh, uh, dealing with the COVID for the for the league and for our our university, so we we're very very fortunate. He's he has a lot of insight. We've stayed communicating with him, Matt Thompson, uh, from our our own staff, along with our trainer Luke Sauber. Um, you know, lots of communications with them. About uh, three weeks or even a little longer than that, I I I finally just said, hey, we got it we got to play basketball. If we're going to practice and have a season, we got to allow our guys to play. They hadn't played in seven months. They finally allowed us to uh, take the masks off, have open gym for a couple of weeks. We started our testing, weekly testing, and, and then went to a couple mini practices once we got the results. And then once practice started, uh, we obviously were not using masks during live competition. They still have their gaiters or their masks when we're talking or we're doing shooting drills or whatever, just trying to limit the, con the contact uh, uh, between the coaches, the players, the players themselves. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's not easy for the guys and they don't have their normal routine. One of the, if you've been on a team, one of the most fun times is get to get there early, shoot around, be with the coaches, hang out in the locker room, stay after. And we got, partitions in the locker room 
Uh, we got to constantly stay on them about having their masks. They can't bring food in. Uh, so it, it's a lot of the normal is, is not there. But uh, we've been fortunate. I think I wrote an uh, email to our parents. I've been trying to communicate them, the players' parents. And I think we're 19. This is the 20th week uh, in, a, in a row that uh, we've been able to stay together and have workouts. And uh, the, the, the issue I think everyone's really dealing with and talking to other coaches, anytime we have a sneeze, a cough, a sore throat, uh, upset stomach, uh, a bad bad bowel movement, whatever it might be, um, you know, we got to take them in because you can't take a chance. So our roster continually changes every day. Uh, you know, somebody's got a cough, they got to go in and get tested. Usually we don't get a result for 24 hours. So certain guys have had to miss practice or we've tried to change practice time. So so we have enough people. So a lot of three on three, a lot of four on four, uh, you know, just anything we can do just to get get our guys reps and, and keep them fresh and keep them with a young team. We got to be learning all the time. And, and with with those new faces that you've had and having to juggle all of the situations that you just mentioned, how tough has it been to kind of get everyone to mesh together, you know, with the pretty, pretty new whole unit that you have? Well, it, it's it's not easy. Uh, the good thing we have been together. I think they enjoy each other. They're, they're I think they all have uh, camaraderie because they all have a purpose, and that's to get to the season and have a good season. Um, I, I think that started from the beginning when Mike and Dejuan got here early. Um, then then Selton got here because he had you know he was the man without a country, and we were able to get him here. And then then we brought the Canadians here. Um, so they they. I think they've become closer together. One of our goals was uh, even though we were March, April, May, uh, we weren't together uh, into June that, you know, we wanted to be closer as a group uh, than, than ever before. And, and they, they had to work on that. They, they had calls together. They had, they played games, uh, video games together, just uh, trying to get to know each other. Because when Rudy Williams came to campus, uh, it was the first time I met him in, pre in person. Uh, you know, so you, you know, so it's tough. Um, and they, they hadn't met them. They hadn't, they hadn't been on campus visits. So, uh, you know, all that stuff is, is something we work on. You know, we're not able to do our normal team building stuff or coming to my house or the coaches houses or go and play paintball or, or bowling or going to movies. And, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's made it, uh, it's made it a little tougher. There's no doubt, but they, they, they've been good about it. We've done some zoom film sessions. We've actually now started bringing guys in a little bit with some uh, social distancing and masks, be able to watch film, and just making the best of it. And, and again, it's, it, you got to think every day and it's a challenge. Hey, Bruce, uh, if I could ask a little bit about your roster right now, what, what would you say are your current expectations for a guy like Celta Miguel? How's he looking? Well, Sultan's very, very talented. Uh, he, he's a gamer. He can make plays. Um, you know, we got to get him a little more consistent. And if you talk to him, uh, you know, just he's, he's trying to hit the, the grand slam every time he's up at the plate. And a lot of times we don't have people on base. So, um, you know, he, he loves that big play. He's our leading assist guy in the, in, the, in the nine practices, but he's also our leading turnover guy. And so he, uh, it, it, we got to get him a little more consistent. And some of that, the question before, getting them to mesh together, learning each other, learning what they can do, what other guys can do, I think that's all part of it. But, uh, you know, Selton, Selton uh, he's got a big body. He's strong. Uh, he's, got, he's got some talent, and he can make some plays. And at, at point guard, does uh, the current situation remind you at all of what you had with Corby and Cam when they were newcomers? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. Um, and, and then you kind of add um, Selton to that mix, and, and you got a little bit of, you know, Mike McGurls, you know, is, is handled the ball a little more. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, you got the freshman, uh, just like Cam was. You got Nigel, uh, you know, can, 
smart, knows how to play, really skilled, uh, has a great feel of the game. And then you got Rudy. Uh, you know, Rudy's learning. He's very solid. He's got a strong body, really good in transition. Uh, but And he'll tell you it, it, it's, it's, it's not easy, but he wants to do well. And, and he wants to learn. And, and I, he's, he's made as much progress over the last couple of weeks as anybody in our program. And when, when you do add as much size as you guys did last season, do you see that impacting the way you play? Uh, I don't know, the speed, the, just the, the way you get up and down the court. I, I don't know. How, how's that been working out in practice? Well, I think the, the big thing is we, we, we feel we got to find ways to score. And, you know, one, I, I believe we can get in transition, um, you know, and push the basketball. We had hopefully multi, uh, versatile, multitask guys that can do a lot of different things uh, with our guards. But at the same thing, time, I think we really feel much more comfortable with throwing the ball in the post. And, uh, you know, right now, Casey's uh, been, I think I look today, I, I can, Grab it. He's he's 68 percent from the field in our in our practices. Um, Davion Bradford 60 percent. So those guys can score the ball. Uh, we've really made an emphasis of getting them the ball inside. Uh, so a, a little different than we we've, we've been for a while because we really have a post presence uh, with those guys. And if we can get them to them deep, they're going to be tough to stop. Who's your leading three-point guy right now? Uh, yeah, get that stat sheet out. Right now, Nigel Pack and Mike McGurl are in the live action, have been the leading uh, three-point uh, scores. Okay. Thanks much, Bruce. Appreciate it. Carlton Lingard, um, has he been able to put on some weight, and what does he bring to the table? I know he's got a little different skill set than the other two folks. Yeah, he's, he's different. Um, he's had a little bit of a back issue and has, has been very limited in our recent practices, uh, but he, he, he has put on weight. Uh, he's, I would tell you, maybe 15 to 20 pounds. I don't know exact numbers. Uh, you know, he feels good about that. He does bring length. He does, uh, he is long. Uh, he's got very, very good skill. Uh, you know, he can score around the hoop also, but he, I think he probably is a little more comfortable is out on the court. I mean, he can, he can shoot some threes, definitely 17 footers. Uh, you know, when you get those three guys together, you we're probably as tall as we've been with, you know, the, and definitely the length is it's much more than we've had in, in recent times. I know you, you lose that, you know, that screen and roll ability defensively with Mac Maywin, but what do these guys do down low? Have they been able to show you some stuff that you like to do philosophy wise on the defensive end? Yeah. I, I, the other thing is they, they block shots, block shots in practice. Um, you know, you just don't go down the lane. Uh, you got to think about it because, uh, you know, Casey's been the, the best so far as far as blocking shots and, um, you know, he, he's done a good job. Davion creates a, a factor. Surrey Lewis has some athleticism and length. Uh, you know, so you you got several different guys that uh, can hopefully be a little more of a backstop to our defense. A couple of weeks since we last spoke, but how has Luke uh, injury come along and how's his mindset been? Well, you know, it, it it's he is out of the cast now. He is in a boot. Um, I think, you know, mindset, he's just happy to get the cast off. Uh, you know, he was using those scooters that everyone is going around town. And now with the ice and the snow last week, it's tough for him to get around. I know his armpits with the crutches, uh, those things need a rest. Um, so, uh, and, and I actually called his dad last week just to check in because you worry about his mental mental health is mental well-being because you're not part of it he comes to every practice he's up on top you know you wave to him you say how you doing but uh not easy for any young man to you know everyone's tough time dealing with covid and now you got to deal with an injury and being out but he is in the weight room now he's lifting uh doing more stuff with luke Saber, our trainer uh so 
I think he feels a little better about himself that he's able to do some stuff. Baja, you want Montavious to take a, a step offensively? Um, how has he looked in practice? Well, I, you know, I, I think he is solid defensively, and he's a, he knows our system. He knows what's going on. Um, we just – I keep telling him and Antonio to find a niche that – where they can score, what are actions where they feel comfortable? Um, you know, Tone's probably a little better three-point shooter. Monty's, you know, got that good mid-range game. And, you know, finding ways to get those short corner jumpers, those free throw line jumpers, uh, you know, rips to the hoop, finishing around the, the basket. Uh, you know, if, if people double team our big guys, can they find ways to get openings and can we make the right pass? So I think those those are things both of those guys and Surrey kind of figuring out where they can help us from that power that power forward position. Coach uh, Dejuan, is he ready to take on a scoring load? Well, I, you know I think he he's going to have to. There's no doubt we're going to have to find scoring from somebody. Uh, you know Mike's probably been our leading scorer. Um, if I look at it. I, I got to tell you, I'm not sure for, I'm not even sure. Uh, yeah, Mike is our leading scorer. Then, uh, you know, then uh, Nigel Pack, Selton, Dejuan, Casey are all up there. Uh, you know, and, and I think with all of them, you know, somebody asked trying to figure out how to get to gel as a team. And that's, that's what's got to happen, that finding your niche, finding your role, finding your way to score, and us as coaches helping you create those opportunities. To, uh, Dave wants a way better shooter. He's just got to find ways to get open threes. Same with Rudy Williams. Rudy's used to having the ball all the time, and now it's a little different situation. So, you know, being ready to shoot when you're wide open uh, and, and stepping up and making those shots. Dave's want to get in those rips drives to the basket, you know, he's always good in transition. He's always been good at, you know, offensive rebounds, those type of things. As uh, recruiting related, it looks like the dead period might get pushed back to the spring if it hasn't already. Um, what does that look like for you and your staff and how are you handling that? Well, you know, we'd like to sign somebody in November. We, uh, I, I feel pretty good that we'll get at least one guy and, and probably would good fortunes would have to happen to get two. Um, I think some people will wait and see how things go. I think everyone's still hoping. Uh, I'd, I'd like the NCA if they're going to push it back till, you know, till after the final four or, or to the April or whatever it might be. I'd like them to announce it now because kids still have that glimmer of hope that people are going to get out, that they're going to visit campuses. Um, you know, I know it's it's definitely been discussed. I think the, they have a game plan, but I think they wanted to wait and see what happens. And you know, is is, is there a vaccine coming? I, you know, are we gonna, is it going to get worse or 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 not? You know, is it going to slow down um, as far as the spike goes with the virus? So I think those factors. But uh, you know, we we did three or four zooms last week with with families. Uh, we're just trying to do our best uh, to uh, – I think we got a couple coming up here, too, through the weekend. Thank you. Well. Coach, um, how – what type of leadership qualities have you seen from Mike McGurl, and how much of the team's success do you think is going to depend on his leadership quality and production? Well, I think the – you know, he has wanted to be the guy um, – Obviously, he is our only senior. He's got our you know most experience and and done some had some really nice moments in his in his career here. But now it's can you be the guy and can you be consistent? And that's what we've talked about. I think he showed that so far in practice. Um, you know, we one is lead by example, um, and he has definitely done that. Days one has done that. Um, you know, they've kind of taken that. I think our freshmen have done a great job of, of getting in the gym and, and leading by, you know, putting in the time and effort. Uh, they're a very, very committed group, uh, along with, you know, not just Mike and Dejuan, Casey, other guys have really put time in the gym. 
one, they don't have anything else to do, uh, but they, they want to have success. And, and that, that has definitely helped. And then the other part of the leadership is, uh, you know, gaining respect and trust of the, the teammates and being there to help them. And that's, that's something we, we have talked about. We had a, a Zoom speaker last week, uh, talked a lot about leadership and uh, setting the example, not just being a friend, holding people accountable, uh, and then uh, making sure um, we have, we're staying at task for our mission. And, and those are things that I've tried to reinforce with our guys. And I think they're starting to understand that.